Android Auto is an essential part of your drive, but a lot of manufacturers are still only giving us wired Android Auto. So for those of us who want to cut the wires entirely, there's quite a few wireless adapters that allow it to work wirelessly, and honestly, there's a lot of them that just aren't that good. Now, I've done extensive testing on the wireless CarPlay side, but now that I've gone all in on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, we're here to push it to its limits and testing wireless Android Auto. So we're comparing three dongles, the AA Wireless, Carsify, and Autocast, all with their own shapes, sizes, and potential flaws as well to show you. And yes, these will only work if your car has existing wired Android Auto, these adapters just make it wireless. And like with any adapter, the experience is going to vary with the vehicle in terms of compatibility. I've tested these on multiple vehicles just to make sure it works, including the 2022 Hyundai Tucson Hybrid Ultimate and the 2021 Toyota Venza. So use the chapters below to jump to a specific section, or like with all my comparisons, jump to the summary at the end. Now let's get started. So we have three Android Auto boxes, AA Wireless, Carsify, and Autocast. All of these boxes required an update out of the box in order to work smoothly with my Pixel 7 Pro, and all of them were able to update over the air using my phone. Some with an app, some through the browser, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Starting with AA Wireless, standing for Android Auto Wireless. This thing is really small. Maybe I'm just used to larger CarPlay adapters, but the dimensions are actually 49 by 49 by 12 millimeters, which is just insanely small. It's running a dual core 1.2 gigahertz CPU, Wi-Fi on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks, Bluetooth 4.2, and a USB-C connector. The production date, by the way, on this one was June 2022, which you can find on the back of the device. So this design is really small, including a USB-C, reset button, and LED indicator light as well. It also comes with a braided USB-A to USB-C to plug into your car. I'm surprised when plugging this in how responsive it actually is. So once your phone is connected, it is easy to swipe through screens and no delay really that's noticeable, and it's able to accommodate both single screen on smaller screens and split screen on larger displays, and it does all of this automatically, which I thought was awesome. In terms of connection speeds, so from starting the vehicle until Android Auto actually appeared on the screen, it took AA Wireless 13.15 seconds. I'll show you a speed test comparison a little later in the video and how that compares to everything else. AA Wireless comes with a companion app as well that's surprisingly complex, you can actually change the Wi-Fi settings for the box, change DPI to fit the resolution of your screen, enable pass-through for a wired connection, manage all of your paired phones, and perform system updates as well, all with just a tap. All of this works incredibly smooth and something I never actually saw on CarPlay adapters, so it's really interesting to see Android goes that direction. Now, I use the AA wireless adapter for a little over a month. Um, generally speaking, it's a good Android Auto box. No noticeable delays in audio, responsive to the touch. The reliability though has been somewhat inconsistent. So for instance, on one of the trips, I noticed the AA wireless box crashed twice, just completely shutting down. I noticed when this was happening that the box got really hot, which could have contributed to that crash. And at the same time, all I was running was music and Google Maps. The good thing is when it crashed, it was quickly able to boot up again and automatically connect leaving the downtime about under 15 seconds each time, and I didn't have to like unplug and plug it back in or anything like that. The other thing is the audio skipping, which occurred more frequently, at least once every 10 to 15 minutes on my trip. Now this is not a significant problem like crashing, uh, but more the occasional stutter, kind of like there's interference from something else. And this, by the way, is something that I've noticed on nearly every single wireless dongle, whether CarPlay or Android Auto that's out there, so it's something that you learn to live with if you want that wireless experience. Overall, I would say it was a really positive experience, and this device has 4.5 stars on Amazon, so other people think so too. Although I do hope that the box becomes more efficient over time, maybe with software updates, as that heating up and crashing does point to some noticeable flaws that need to be resolved. AA Wireless comes with a 14-day return policy and a one-year warranty, and at the time of making this video, it costs $90 US. Next up, we have our second box, Carsify, extending a little taller but narrower at 65.5 by 35.5 by 9.3 millimeters. It has a dual core one gigahertz CPU, slightly lower than AA wireless, Wi-Fi 2.4 and five gigahertz, Bluetooth 4.2, and a USB-C connector. This one is very compact as well with USB-C on top, an indicator light to tell you when it's booting, connecting, successfully connected, or experiencing an error. In the box, you're getting a USB-C to C and a USB-C to A, depending on what your car actually has. It also comes with an adhesive sticker to pin this to your vehicle and get it out of the way, which I thought was a really nice touch. Carsify also has what they call a magic button, which allows you to easily switch between connections 
and you can change the functions of what that does using the app, including, by the way, when to switch between paired phones or when to just start and stop Android Auto entirely. Again, it's a feature that I've never seen on other adapters, and there's just something about having a physical button to quickly switch when you're on the go and driving. It's just a really nice feature to have. So when testing boot time, Carsify took 22.15 seconds to boot, which is slightly longer than AA Wireless. Carsify comes with a companion app to see your paired connections, manage DPI resolution, start and stop, including the ability to do so based on your car name. So say you get into one car and you don't want it to automatically connect and start, it can actually filter and stop that. You can also change the function of that magic button, including toggling between your paired devices and start and stop of Android Auto. This also lets you perform over-the-air updates, which is really easy if needed. Like I said with the Pixel 7 Pro, I did have to update in order for it to work smoothly. So I tested Carsify for my first month with the Google Pixel 7 Pro, and I have to say this one was pleasantly more reliable. Sure, it had some of the same minor audio skipping like interference, but significantly less than AA Wireless. This box also gets warm as soon as about a 15 minute drive, but it never seemed quite as hot again as AA Wireless and in my testing, it never actually fully just crashed. Carsify has a 30 day return policy and comes at a slightly higher price of 150, but at the time of making this video, it just costs 129. Now, last but not least, we have Autocast U2X Pro. This one is a little larger coming in at 85 by 48 by 14 millimeters, but it comes with two in one handling both wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. So if you're like me and you like using both iPhone and Android on a regular basis, this one already comes out ahead. So this one's running a version of Linux to be able to switch between CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got a dual core one gigahertz ARM A7 CPU, includes 256 megabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of ROM, running both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth 4.0. This one has a larger form factor, but overall it actually looks really nice in design. It includes a USB-C to connect to your car, venting along the sides, and then an LED indicator to tell you when it's powered on, connected, or updating. A USB-C as well for a pass-through wired connection for Android Auto, or for a connection to a USB flash drive if you want to update using that instead of the over-the-air, which it can do. Last, we have a smart button similar to that on Carsify, which when pressed once, disconnects from wireless Android Auto or CarPlay, press for five seconds to switch to update mode, or press for 10 seconds to restore completely. Testing this device definitely had my highest hopes as it had that two-in-one feature that just works perfectly for my use case. But when booting Android Auto, I actually found that the screen was just too stretched. It might not be totally noticeable to some people, but when you're switching from traditional wired Android Auto to this box, I really noticed it here, especially in those fonts. I also noticed this one was a little less responsive to the touch on Android with slower movement and animation. Overall, I didn't notice degraded sound quality or crashes, ironically making this one of the more reliable options despite that stretched screen. So using it with CarPlay, I actually noticed that it was way more responsive than the Android equivalent. The screen also wasn't skewed at all, and I really had no noticeable problems with crashing or delays. The quick switch button is something I found myself actually using constantly because it basically brings you back to that pairing screen where you can choose a different phone to switch to. Another interesting feature is that if you have a smaller screen, you can turn on split screen in Android Auto. However, both of my vehicles already enable split screen by default, so I wasn't able to test this out. Now, in terms of switching, I noticed that switching from Android to iOS did cause some errors and some timing taking over one and a half minutes to display just an error. And in most cases, it worked within 45 seconds with a shorter time for CarPlay at 33 seconds. But there were some occasional times when I needed to fully unplug the AutoCast and plug it back in, especially when switching between CarPlay and Android Auto. Overall, I really enjoyed the AutoCast, at least on the CarPlay side. I liked having the option of both CarPlay and Android Auto, and a dedicated button to switch between the two. If it didn't skew the Android Auto screen, I would have easily suggested this one, but at this point it comes down to personal preference, and if you can live with the noticeable skew, then I would say yeah, go for it. AutoCast comes at nearly twice the price at $207 at the time of making this video, now showing you a side-by-side -side comparison of the boot times, I'm counting from the moment I started my car to the moment Android Auto loads on the screen. Some cars are obviously gonna be faster than others depending on how quickly they can actually boot their system. Now in first place, we have AA Wireless loading at just 13.15 seconds. In second place, we have Carsify loading in 22.15 seconds. And in third place, 
we have AutoCast loading in 43.82 seconds for Android, and then another test showing 33.71 seconds for CarPlay. While Carsify and AA Wireless were very consistent load times throughout my testing, AutoCast could sometimes take much longer, reaching upwards of a minute and a half, only to receive an error and then need to unplug it and reboot anyway. So to sum up this video, I've made a comparison that shows you every single detail that you need to consider when you're selecting wireless Android Auto adapters. So all devices could do wireless Android Auto with AutoCast being the only one that stretches the screen, only AutoCast can do wireless CarPlay and a wired pass-through connection. AA Wireless and Carsify have companion apps while AutoCast is updated via the web. AA Wireless was the fastest to boot and AutoCast took the longest. In terms of unique features, AA Wireless is the cheapest option. Carsify has a magic button for fast switching and the ability to automatically start or stop Android Auto when starting your car. AutoCast has a two-in-one Android Auto and CarPlay and a pass-through connection via USB. AA Wireless is the cheapest option and AutoCast is the most expensive. So overall, my top choice at the moment is Carsify, coming at the middle price point of $129, but it achieved the most reliable experience without any crashing and display problems. This connects quickly and functions just like wired Android Auto on both my 2022 Hyundai Tucson and the 2021 Toyota Venza. Now obviously these videos are months in the making, and it takes a lot of time, so please subscribe if you haven't already. But also if I missed anything in this review, or you have questions about anything, or you want to see another Android Auto adapter that I haven't mentioned here, leave it all down in the comments below. Thank you to both Carsify and AA Wireless for sponsoring this comparison video, and thank all of you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.